the corpuses are they mostly because when it comes to uh, visu- uh, vision and AI, the corpuses mm-hmm. are quite finely tuned. Uh, mm-hmm. How are the corpuses uh, u- uh, used and uh, tuned in uh, pre-training of AI systems? Well, I mean that's, I mean it's a very general question. But if we, I mean if we look at the data sets that are, for example, being discussed within the field of uh, music information retrieval which is the engineering field that, uh, well, tries to get mu- information out of music data, also for the scope of synthesis. If you look at the data sets, uh, well, that are, that are being used um, there, it is, uh, well, I mean, it's, there are certain biases in these data. Uh, there are um, certain music's uh, clearly overrepresented because they're easier available. And um, I would say the the amount of consideration of what the data actually contains uh, is a little bit overshadowed by the demand for larger data sets. So it's still more the thinking like just more data is better uh, than really to really see what is in within the data sets very often. So do you think that Western music kind of dominates to some degree? Or well, that's pretty obvious, yeah. And yeah. I'm, if I may just ask, do you, what areas of Western music do you think are mostly dominating in these corpuses? Well, what uh, in general, what has been uh, marketed and produced by uh, the music industry, mm. right? So popular musics. And are there any approaches at least... Uh, and I say this because there is this overshadowing factor of uh, Dolly and the mm. visualization models uh, mm. of being able to generate almost anything uh, because of the pre-training that they've received. But uh, music has lagged to a certain degree on mm-hmm. that front uh, mm. because of the many disciplines, different disciplines that exist within it. Mm-hmm. Uh, are there any approaches of having, for example, pop music specific AIs or uh, classical specific music AIs? Yeah, yeah, of course, there are many approaches that really try to build specific um, models for specific musical styles. Yes, I mean, if you just think about all the publication and attempts that have been around that try to compose music in the style of, name it, Bach or Mozart and well, of course, mostly composers of the, again, Western uh, classical corpus. And do you think that it is perhaps to a certain degree because of the structure of these musics as well? I know that you work with the uh, tempos in music and then yeah. you can meter it. And uh, Indian music has a completely different structure to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Persian music or Arabic musics have different structural uh, differences with Western music. Mm. I wonder which... Uh, mi- it's hard, of course, very, uh, to be uh, objective in these questions. Uh, uh, I think there's no simple explanation for it. I mean, one uh, point is, of course, that uh, this music is... Uh, music that is very... Um, or that is traditionally being notated in the form that... Uh, most of the people developing these things can read and understand and also because of that phrase into some kind of machine learning models, right? So since you brought up the example of Indian music, I mean, Indian music is, uh, well, traditionally it's not being notated, right? So, and uh, the Western classical canon is, uh, well, the that's the, the tradition that established um, the notation uh, in the form that we have it. So, and uh, I think this complex relation of of the music to the notation formats um, kind of makes it more um, easy to approach it with an engineering mind, right? At least with a, probably with a Western culturally centered mind. So, yeah, I don't know if that's... Uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of think that it was t- to some degrees with these uh, approaches both in the 19th and 20th century to kind of mathematicize both language and mm-hmm. uh, uh, 
music to some degrees as well. Uh, so perhaps these different Western uh, disciplines have had influences well, on them. Ma- uh, how, how was the word mathematic? Math- math- yeah, uh, I don't necessarily. <laughs> uh, I mean, so I mean, th- I mean that is also. Uh, I mean, if you speak with Indian percussionists, they they love to do that, right? Indian percussionists l- love to 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 do. Uh, very complex uh, uh, ratios of, of rhythms and they were v- are very um, conscious about that. So it's very much about mathematics uh, for Indian uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I have to say, I always am fascinated by uh, the Fibonacci sequences that mm-hmm. uh, come out of percussionists uh, in mm-hmm. Indian music. But mm-hmm. uh, I mostly m- mean in the sense that, uh, especially, I think, from a positivistic approach Mm -hmm. of uh, mathematics and philosophy, Mm -hmm. they uh, try to have confined rules for almost anything, especially in the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, But, of course, the Western canon in terms of uh, music has been similar to the the current status to some degree or another from the 17th century, I would say. Mm -hmm. Mm. I mean... I think this whole logic that is to some extent behind that is of course is something that is very uh it's very attractive to think of that in terms of uh of data structures and uh in the as since you called it also positivist uh, approach so that you would basically think that everything that you can uh symbolize in that way that this is a complete representation of the music that you have in front of you that this actually works i mean that's very much uh yeah well, maybe yeah, that's uh that's uh kind of what we what we can see in engineering approaches and their focus to the western musics maybe yeah.